What's up? It's Helena. This video is on Flux Model training. You can customize your Flux Model online and access your train model with super fast generation speeds. No need for any local setup, we've done the hard work for you. Flux is the highest quality training system I've ever seen. It does amazing styles and characters. Before we dive into it, this is a model I trained for my dog, Lucy. My dog has one ear up and one ear down. I've tried all kinds of AI and I've never got it to successfully capture this trait, but Flux did it. So out of these eight images, only one is a real photo of her. Take a guess and comment the number below. Include your OpenR username in the comment and I'll add some credits to your account. What we're doing here is actually fine-tuning a model based on the pre-trained Flux model. What it does is it teaches AI specific things that are important to you. So it's all about AI identifying common themes in your training images, extrapolating them, and then applying them in your generations. I'm not trying to sound pedantic, but understanding a bit of the working principles can really help you curate a great training set and train a successful model. Hopefully with this video, we can save you some wasted training quotas because I've wasted a lot for you. So we're actually fine tuning the model, but we'll call it training for simplicity. You're teaching AI traits or characteristics. And by showing these traits recurrently in your training images, AI will learn that these traits are what you're trying to teach and it'll pick them up. So you can really think of this process like education. If you've raised a kid or taught your pet a trick, it's very similar, except it's only reward training and no punishment training. You're only showing AI good examples. So when you start preparing training images, let's answer these two questions. What characteristics do I want AI to pick up? If you're training a character model, does the character always wear a bow tie? Does the character have an eye bracelet? Does the character have a shoulder tattoo? Or maybe the character always wears the same outfit? Once you identify these traits, you want to make sure that these traits are showing up in almost every single image in your training set, and these traits should be consistent. The second question is opposite to the first one. What are the things that I want to have flexibility with? If the red bow tie isn't an inherent feature that I want with my character, it should only show up in at most one or two images. If it shows up too much in the training images, you'll find that you can't even remove it. It'll always give you that bow tie because it thinks it's like a part of the body. And you'll see what I mean with a real example that I'm gonna do with Grogu. The first step to making your own model is to prepare the training images. Tips for training images. You don't want any watermarks or weird edges or frames, not even a white margin like this, because the model learns from them and you won't get good results. You also want to curate images thoughtfully. Think about what traits you want to teach the model and make sure you have lots of images with those traits. Think about what you want flexibility with and make sure you have a good variety. Then you also want good image quality. They don't have to be super high resolution, but somewhere around 500 times 500 pixels would be a good lower bound. Finally, your image files need to satisfy these restrictions. Both dimensions have to be greater than 384, and accepted formats are JPEG, PNG, or WebP. Let's train a character model together on Grogu. Since I'm trying to demo this, I'm just grabbing Grogu pictures from Pinterest. I have about 50, 60 images from there. This is a relatively straightforward character, so I don't really have to find pictures of Grogu dressed differently. I just have to make sure there's a good variety of angles, poses and facial expressions and once i have all these images let's actually do a cleanup together we want to remove low quality pictures and repetitive pictures because that may be over exaggerating a certain trait so this picture is pretty low quality i'm gonna try to delete that i think it's this one yeah gone all right let's keep going i wonder if this let's keep this one because i'd like to have a little bit of flexibility of putting on a different outfit uh i think all right the resolution's too low for this one so you're also gone this one's all right even though the quality is not that good i like this pose and we'll keep it in all right so with this picture i'm seeing a white frame it shouldn't be that big of an issue since there's only one picture like this but to be safe let's crop it all right 
and doing a cartoon one as well as long as i don't have like 10 cartoon ones it's not really gonna affect my results all right the training set looks good let's start training our model i'm gonna name it ultimate grogu this describe the character field i'll explain later in the video let's leave it blank for now we can always edit it later and time to drop all the images let's start Oh, let's see. I think some of the images are too small. So let's try to find those and also remove them or upscale them. But I might just remove them. Maybe this one. This one's also too small. We have to put in something, so I'll just say Star Wars. This is really exciting. It's gonna take five to ten minutes, so let's come back then. And we're done. This one's actually super fast. It only took like three minutes. So let's create something together. Ooh, okay. Let's just type Grogu. And I'm not editing this to show you how fast the generations are. Oh, okay. Oh, this is cute. Oh, this is, this is like cinematic quality. I'm so impressed. I've tried to train a Grogu model before and it was never this good. Uh, let me just generate a few more. And... And this will kind of represent this model's like basic quality because I'm just prompting the simplest thing. It's incredible. Let's put in something slightly different. Because I think we included some meditation training images, but I don't think we had a beach picture. Oh, it's really cute. Let's let's add with eyes closed. Because the flux model has really good prompt adherence, so it should be able to get it. Nice. Not bad. This one still had eyes open. Let's give it another try. That looks like a 50% hit rate to me. It's decent. Okay. Grogu eating Oreos in a spaceship. Hey, we have his little pot. His pot is in the training set. And I probably thought the pod was some sort of a spaceship. This picture has a really creative angle. I think we did a good job curating our training images. It had a good variety of camera angles. And to show you something new about the train models, we have something called the model weight. And if we set it all the way to zero, our train model is basically not doing much. It's gonna be closer to what Flux is without our fine tuning. And as you can see, oh, I don't even think Flux has any knowledge of Grogu. And if we, ooh, this thing makes me really uncomfortable. I'm gonna delete them. All right, I apologize for the disturbing pictures. If we put it at 0 0.4, we're starting to bring in our train model and it's looking a lot better. But you can see the image quality is not as good as if we set it to be higher. I think the default we have is on 0.7 or 0.8. One really nice photorealistic shot and one nice cartoon shot. And if we bring it all the way to one, our train model should feel even stronger. Right. So that's a parameter that you can adjust. With our character model, it probably doesn't really matter. But oftentimes, if you train the style model, you might want to increase the weight so your style can have a stronger presence. So we have Grogu as a DJ, Grogu dancing, Grogu fixing things with tools, Grogu at a Chinese restaurant, Grogu eating popcorn at a movie theater, and I also made a Halloween edition. Um, the text generation is pretty good. We're getting the trick or treat speech bubble right half of the time. Why is it always half right? But it's already pretty good. Though I do have trouble getting Grogu to wear anything else but his original robe. This is a double-edged sword. Flux is really good at picking up these traits. So it's like when we said we need to really think about what traits we want the model to pick up because once the model learns it, it might become impossible to change it. I can't get Grogu to wear anything else. If I want to be able to do that, in my training images, I need to have Grogu wear a lot of different things. If Grogu only ever wears this in my training images, my AI is going to think this is an important thing about the character that we cannot change. So whenever you want to have flexibility with some aspects, make sure you have a good variety in your training images. If you're training a style model, you may need to do some tests on the create page to figure out the best formula to work with your model. Here's an example of this model called Cozy Work Illustrations. I originally had this model trained with stability, and you can check out my previous tutorial on training models. 
The overall process and ideas are pretty similar. It's just that it's better and stronger now. Let me show you my training images. It's some graphics for corporate style illustrations, and it has a warm toned vintage style purple, pink, yellow, and green color palette. Let's try creating with this model. We have girl working in front of the PC at night. And now my goal is to figure out the best way to work with my model so I can get usable assets like this. Just to demo the parameters again, when we set model weight to zero, this is what Flux would generate from this prompt vector corporate style illustration girl working in front of the PC at night. And if we drag it all the way to one, it's very much our model. 0.8 or 0.9 would usually work the best for most style models. So I'm gonna set this back to the default value, but you may need to experiment to find the best recipe. So what I will do is I would generate at least eight pictures so I get a better sense of what this model tends to do right now. And what I don't quite like is I want the picture to be a little cleaner. Like I wanted to focus on the subject more because I'm trying to use these as graphics. So now I will start tweaking the model description. And again, I would generate a few more images just so there isn't too much random bias. And I think that worked. This is really good. I think these are all super usable. It's a lot cleaner and simpler. And with just a little bit of editing, I'll be able to use this. So now we remove the background and open art. And this is just like one of my training images. Once we find the best model description, we can copy this and go to the models page find this model and click edit and we can just replace this with our new description save it and now every time we create with this model it's just gonna auto fill that for us so definitely go train some models it's hard to believe how easy it is earlier today accelerator wonderful youtuber has a lot of great videos about ai told me that he just trained a new model using the new flux training on open art and he was like hey can you check if i did it right does the model work well because it was just way too easy it feels like it should be harder and it is actually just that easy here's his model i wonder what training images he used maybe he'll make a video on it I will make a video about how I trained this model for my dog. It actually means so much to me. This is why I appreciate AI so much. Lucy is a very timid rescue dog. I've actually never seen her play with a snowman like that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if you also have a pet. You'll definitely love this model. That's a wrap. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.